Welcome back to Lockfall Labs. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at a Medico Biaxial. As you may already know, this lock offers regular pin tumbler security, but upgraded with a second locking device called a sidebar and rotating pins. Let's look inside. This copper looking piece is called a sidebar. While it can work different ways in different locks, it always prevents core movement. We will show exactly how later, but in a Medico lock, it needs key pin rotation to be correct to bear into the pins and allow the core to move. Let's see how this lock works as we insert the correct key. Pay special attention to how the pins rotate on the angled cuts of the key, but also that they move up and down just like a normal pin tumbler lock. As we come to the end with the key fully inserted, you can see all the pins at the shear line, and we'll bring the sidebar back here, and we can see that the core is allowed to rotate and open the lock. Great, let's swing around to the side and see how the sidebar works. First, we have the finger-like protrusions on the sidebar. They need to go into the deeper groove that runs lengthwise down the key pins called the true gate. Just to the left of the true gate, we have what is called a false gate. It is essentially a gate or notch that will grab onto the sidebar, but is not deep enough to allow the lock to open, effectively making these locks much harder to pick. However, false gates are not guaranteed in Medeco locks and some either have very few false gates or completely none at all. This makes pick resistance highly variable, with some examples being quite easy. The best way to know is to open up your lock and see. If you take a look at what is now the top of the key pin, you'll notice a small tab attached. Then in the core, as well as in the Bible, there's a matching milled channel. These features are for preventing over rotation of the pins. In a regular pin tumbler lock, it doesn't really matter how much the pins spin. But in a Medeco, they need to be concerned with reliability. And if the pins can rotate too much, the key might not be able to orient the pins correctly. It has a possibility of not working without these tabs. The maximum rotation is 20 degrees either direction. So that makes basically only three valid positions. Looking at the tabs on pin stack number one, we have 20 degrees to the left, neutral on stack two, and 20 degrees to the right on stack three. So the sidebar code, let's call it, can easily be read just by orienting the true gates correctly and then reading the tabs in the top of the key pin. Now with only three rotation positions, you might think that's not a lot. And in general, it isn't. However, with six pins plus height cuts, it can add a decent amount of extra code combinations possible. But the real picking and bumping security is added by having false gates on each key pin. Interestingly enough, at one time, Medeco didn't even release every code possible for key pin rotation. Someone found this out through a locksmith and determined that angled bump keys could be made with a set of only four keys. In response, Medeco then had to release more sidebar codes, and those four bump keys needed to be increased to 16 to work again. Now let's look from the front and see how the sidebar actually locks the core in place. So you can see here we have a little V-channel that runs the full length of the Bible. And on the sidebar, there's a matching V-shape that fills that space. The finger protrusions are at the right length to allow the key pins to rotate when no rotation is put on the core. And there are a couple of springs in the sidebar to keep it pushed outward slightly into the Bible. But as soon as you start to rotate the core, watch what happens. Our sidebar will bear into the key pins. And if the true gates are aligned correctly, the sidebar drops in further and allows the core to rotate. If not, the sidebar would prevent core rotation. And if you remember my first video on how locks work, preventing core rotation is what a lock is all about. So the sidebar is providing our secondary locking mechanism, in addition to the pins like normal. Quickly while we are here, I'll mention that this ball at the front of the sidebar is a hardened piece of steel meant to provide extra drill resistance. There are several other pins and plates in place in this lock that provide a lot of drill resistance at different points. We'll take a look at this more in a future video, but know that drill resistance is a major feature in high security locks, as most end up getting drilled rather than being picked. Take a look again at the key and pin rotation as we remove it from the lock. Now we'll take a final look at the key and see what makes it different. 
Under a cursory glance, this key might look very similar to a regular pin tumbler lock. But if you look closer, you can see that, that the angled cuts on the key match to the chiseled tips of the key pins. From the front of the key, you have two cuts rotated to the left, then two cuts to the right, then one neutral, and last the cut to the left again. Just like pin height, this is ideally coded to each lock and is unique. Well, that's pretty much it for the operation of this lock. In the next video, I'll be getting into several methods and how to pick this Medico. And after that, I'm planning to show other vulnerabilities and how you can check your locks to make sure they're as secure as possible if you do have medical locks in production. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more and consider subscribing if you want to be notified of future videos like this. Thank you.